All right, so this is it. This is the final product. This is the pumpernickel rye bread. So after we have one and three quarters cups of water, I usually add it right here to my French press. So I already had coffee this morning. So this is my leftover grounds. Now I'm just adding my one and three quarters cup of water to this because you need a like a little bit of a coffee infused water for this bread. So I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna pour it back into our measuring cup and I'm gonna warm it up and then I'm gonna start my my must, my, my yeast and my water uh, concoction and get the yeast activated so then we can add in our flour and other ingredients. So stay tuned. All right, so now we're ready to start our bread. I have my coffee water that you saw me prepare before in the French press. So I have one and three quarters cup of coffee water. I'll pour that in there right like that. Next, I'm gonna add my honey because your yeast feeds on the sugars. This will help it just get started, but also add some sweeteners to the bread itself. So I'll just put a little bit like that. All right, then you're gonna use two tablespoons of molasses. So we'll add that in there now. So that's one. That's two. Give that a little stir. Now the water, it was just like lukewarm. Like I, I heated it up for about 45 seconds in the microwave. So just depends on whatever, you know, temperature your microwave runs at. Mine about 45 seconds was perfect. You don't want scalding hot water for your yeast. I just have it like lukewarm, just enough to get it awake and, and get everything to be able to incorporate together well. So now we're gonna add our yeast. We have everything incorporated in there nicely together. We're going to add a teaspoon of yeast. And I'm just using this active dry yeast. I, I buy a big jar of it because I make probably, I don't know, three, three breads a week. I make my regular white bread um, every week. And then I'm gonna start making this again. I, I, I was trying to perfect this recipe. This is the uh, pumpernickel rye bread. And I, you know, we were busy. I wasn't able to get around to it, but now I'm trying to perfect it. Now this is a recipe that I used to have, that I used to use that was just about perfect. So I'm gonna see how it does this time, if it needs any tweaking. And if so, we'll tweak it. But I think that we'll be pretty good with this recipe. Now I'm gonna post the recipe down in the description below too, so that way you can, you know, write it down and keep it in your 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 uh, recipe book, or whatever. But so that's all we do. Now we're gonna let this sit for about ten minutes. We what we want to see is some bubbles starting to form from the yeast, starting to get activated. From there, we'll add our dry ingredients and our salt, and then we'll let it sit for a few hours to rise. All right. Now that it's been about fifteen minutes. Uh, since our yeast has been in here, you can see that there's getting cloudy. We're getting some bubbles every now and then. You can tell that the yeast is starting to work in there. So now I'm going to start adding all my dry ingredients. I have flour, which I'm going to do three cups. I have pumpernickel rye meal, and I'm going to do one cup. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of this cocoa powder. So let's start adding that in. And you don't have to get all crazy and scientific with it. I just do my scoop and, and shake it and that'll be just fine. So there's one cup. Here's two cups. Three cups. Now I'm using, for this, I'm using all-purpose flour just because I had an abundance of it. So I'm trying to 
get it used up and then I'll buy some bread flour. Now we're gonna add our cup of pumpernickel rye. And for this I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing a cup and shaking it where it looks about right. And we're gonna add that in. Now we're gonna add in our cocoa powder. There's all different kinds of brands that you can find out there. This just gives it the dark, um, rich color, that dark pumpernickel color. So we'll add in two tablespoons. There's one. That's two. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna add in our two teaspoons of salt. One, two. Now that all of our dry ingredients are in, our wet ingredients are in, we're gonna mix it up. I just used the end of a spatula here, wooden one, and we're just gonna mix everything together. So I'm just gonna work it into it a little bit, get everything nice and sticky, and then we'll let it sit for quite a few hours here on the counter with a cloth over top of it and let it start to do its thing. Then we'll come back, check it. We will push down on our, you know, once it starts to rise, we'll push down on it. We'll knead it a little bit more. And I'm not really kneading, I'm just kind of working everything in together, working all the dry into the wet ingredients here. Because you can see there's just a little bit more dry there on the bottom. Once everything's nice and wet, I'll leave it. Just like that, that'll be good. So now we're just gonna leave this here on the counter. I'll cover it up with my dish rag. And we'll just let it sit like that for the next couple hours and then we'll get back with you. All right, so it's been a few hours. You can see it's puffed up quite a bit. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more flour, just so it doesn't you know, stick, stick to my hands or anything like that. And then I'm just gonna move it around a little bit and kind of knead it. Nothing crazy. I'm just trying to keep it you know, well incorporated together and spread the, the flavors and the goodness everywhere. Now, if you want to, <clears throat> and you want to add some extra flavor to your bread. Now this goes with any of the breads that I have posted on, on my page, my regular white bread. You can, you can add flavors to it. I always add flavor to my bread when, I, when I'm making them, except for this pumpernickel. I, I haven't added anything to this one yet, but I usually put rosemary, garlic, and onion in my in my breads, my white bread. So this is looking good. It's getting some good color to it. The more you you know push it around and knead it, the less um, white it's gonna be. It's gonna get more of a darker color. Also, if you want it to be more darker, like like black almost, you can add more cocoa to the uh, to the mixture when you're making it. But right now, 
that's what we're looking at right there. So I'm going to let it sit now for a couple more hours. It's probably been sitting for like three or four hours. So I'll probably let it sit for another hour or two. And then I'll start prepping the, uh, the oven to get ready for this to bake. Right, so now that we've proofed our bread and it's ready to go in the oven, we're going to preset our oven to 400 degrees. And then we're going to take our Dutch oven with the lid off. And we're going to put the Dutch oven in the oven and let it get to temperature. So while that's doing that, we're going to get our bread and get it formed and get it the way we want it. So I, add, I added a little bit of olive oil around the bread just to like get it smooth and get it the way I want it. So now I'm just going to form my bread, right? I want a nice round loaf, something like that. Okay. And then we're, once I get to my shape that I want, I'm going to let it sit here on the table or the counter, excuse me. Okay. Now you can either use olive oil or you can, you can just wet your hand a little bit in the sink and wet the top of the dough. That'll give it like a little bit of a stickiness on top and on the sides. And then that's when you can add your toppings. So like, say you want to do, um, like some everything bagel seasoning or whatever seasoning you want on top, you can add to so, it. I've gotten my dough here on top a little bit wet. So it gives it like a stickiness sensation to it. So now I'm gonna add my everything seasoning. This is like, you know, if you, if you eat everything bagels, same thing, it's got a little onion, salt, um, let's see, garlic, poppy seeds. It's just a good little addition to the this slice of bread. Now I'm just gonna shake it on there. Generous, generously. And then I'll pat it in. We're going to do that all the way around. All right, so now that we got our seasoning on here, now we're just going to wait till our, our uh, oven gets up to 400 degrees and gets that Dutch oven really nice and hot. And then we're gonna add our bread All to right, it. So we're ready to put our bread in the oven. I got the Dutch oven preheated. The oven's at 400 degrees. Let's get it out. All right, there's our preheated Dutch oven. Now we're just gonna take our bread. Plop it right in there. Let me rinse off my hands real quick. We're gonna put our lid on. And then we're gonna bake this in the oven. Probably about 30 minutes. So after about 30 minutes, I'll check it and we'll see how we're looking. I like my top a little bit crunchy, so we'll see. I'm, I'm gonna start it off at 30 minutes because that's what I do my white bread at. And then we'll go from there. All right, so we finished the bread. I've had it sitting out here on the cooling rack for probably about 30 minutes now. This is what it looks like, the finished product. Now let's cut into it and check it out. By the way, I cooked it in the Dutch oven for 30 minutes. So there you have it. We're gonna put a little butter on this and enjoy it. But this is my pumpernickel rye bread with the everything bagel seasoning on it. All right, so this is it. This is the final product. This is the pumpernickel rye bread finished and completed. And now I'm gonna enjoy some. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.